actually, we have this idea that computers run on electricity, this foundational, fundamental, I don't know if I'm saying that word right, but foundational, fundamental premise, computers run on electricity, electricity can be on or off, and depending upon whether or not a circuit or a switch or a light bulb, which is a circuit or a switch, is in an on or off state, uh, you know, uh, we could store two pieces of information, and that is actually how uh, computers are built. Because um, we can then create coding schemes so that, you know, those arrangements of on or offs mean something. And you are looking at right now a picture of the ENIAC, which was, uh, I'm going to just venture to say, the first digital electronic computer. It was created and turned on in 1947. And what you're looking at is actually these things right here on the back of the ENIAC part of the computer, the original first computer. And these things right here aren't light bulbs. They're very similar to light bulbs, but they are vacuum tubes, vacuum tubes. And vacuum tubes are things which could hold on-off states, right? So it could either, like a light bulb, very much like a light bulb, it could be either on or it could be off. So it could be holding that circuit in either an open or a closed position. And uh, so the first computer was built with vacuum tubes, and the vacuum tubes, uh, you know, were, were the, the, the technology which stored the on-off states. And if we go to Wikipedia, we could see here is the ENIAC. Yeah, great, the first electronic general purpose computer. <laughs> I got that correct. And it was turned on July 29, 1947. So not that long ago, really, you know, if you think about what computers can do today and you look at these images of what was happening back then in the day, uh, pretty amazing, pretty phenomenal. And, um, you know, the first computer had 17,468 vacuum tubes, 17,468 vacuum tubes. So we saw in that one little schematic here we would have needed, you know, three circuits there for each letter, and we had six letters. So we would have needed 18 different circuits, which could be an on or off state. And we would, you know, if it was an original computer, we would have needed 18 uh, vacuum tubes uh, so that we could store B, A, D, C, A, B, those six letters. And so that's the, the ENIAC. And the first computers actually uh, worked by uh, storing the on-off states with vacuum tubes. And we characterize the generations of computers based upon what kind of technology they use to store on or off states. So the first computers, the first generation of computers, they are characterized by vacuum tubes. And the ENIAC was the first digital computer and it had 17,468 of these vacuum tubes which could be in on or off states, right? And so here is a picture of all of that. And uh, the second computer was the Univac, which was turned on March 1951, right? A little bit after that. So if we wanted to, we could search through here for vacuum and uh, see if it tells us how many vacuum tubes are in there, but I don't see that right off the bat. So we'll just stick with this. Um, you know, one of the things that was uh, problematic with first generation of computers with using vacuum tubes is that they ran hot and uh, so they produced heat and that was problematic. And then they also burned out pretty quickly. And, um, and what would happen was uh, the heat would attract moths. And so moths would fly into this area where all the vacuum tubes were and then they would die and cause problems. And so people would have to actually literally physically go in and debug the computer, get the bugs out of the computer. And so that's where that phrase came from, still sticks with us today, at least that's the folklore, the myth about where it came from, uh, that this is how we go about debugging computers. And if you actually Google uh, Mary Grace Hopper uh, bug journal, let's see if this brings it up, their bug journal. And we'll just search for images of that. Uh, here we go. So here's an image of uh, relay to panel F, moth and relay. First actual case of bug being found. <laughs> 1940, what is that? Uh, 99, I don't know, 1947. First computer bug, 1947. So there it is, debugging the computer. 
and that was done by Grace Hopper, who is a kind of, you know, uh, important figure in computer science, computer programming. So uh, characterizing the point of this video is to learn about the generations of computers. And the first generation of computers used vacuum tubes. Uh, and then the second generation of computers took a really big jump. So we went from vacuum tubes to these little things right here called transistors. And you can see the size, you know, much better, really redu big reduction in size. And then also uh, these ran a lot cooler and they didn't burn out. Or, you know, if they did, they had a much longer extended life. So the first generation computers use vacuum tubes to store on, or off, on and off states. The second generation of computers use uh, transistors to store on and off states. And then the third generation of computers took a jump even farther. And they started using, these are hard to pick up, uh, integrated circuits or chips. Integrated circuits or chips. So using silicon and creating silicon wafers, right? Silicon is a semiconductor, so it's able to conduct electricity, uh, you know, sometimes and not at other times. Not all of the time and not none of the time, but sometimes and sometimes not. So it's a semiconductor. But uh, using silicon to create silicon wafers, they were able on a very, very, very small level to create circuits right here, right? Integrate circuits right into, they're able to integrate circuits right into these silicon wafers. They're able to put the circuits there, which could be checked electronically to see if they're in on or off states. And the number of circuits, right? These are basically things that just hold circuits on or off states. The circuit could be open or the circuit could be closed. The switch could be on or the switch could be off. These things just hold those on or off states the number of circuits on and off states that they could put onto these little silicon wafers is actually mind-blowing, mind-boggling, right? Like it was originally this big for one, and they are now able to put billions and billions and billions of little on and off switches right onto these silicon wafers. So a, a truly phenomenal, gigantic, uh, you know, um, accomplishment within the history of humanity that we have been able to figure out how to do that. It's truly amazing. So the third third generation of computers is characterized by chips, right? Or integrated circuits. You could use those phrases interchangeably. The fourth generation of computers was characterized by microprocessors or CPUs. So in 1971, Intel uh, brought together a lot of the important processing components and put them into one central component. They called that the central processing unit. And so that's the fourth generation of computers. And the fifth generation of computers is still out for debate. Nobody knows what it's characterized by. Uh, so some people speculate artificial intelligence. I don't know. I think maybe connectivity would really be in collaboration. Collaborative computing would be a big characteristic of uh, where we're at now with the generations of computers. But that's up for speculation. All right, onwards and forwards.